Sir Mo Farah has brought Great Britain some of its greatest and historic sporting moments. Unbelievable! I think I started smacking my head, didn't I? I just remember going, oh my God, I won the race and, and, and being relieved as well as, you know, seeing a Union Jack throughout the stadium everywhere and I, th I think it doesn't quite kick in, yeah, you won the race, but afterwards you go and see your family and, and, and you go through and everyone's talking about you. Super Saturday at the London 2012 Olympics had the nation glued to their TVs in triumphant mood. And people celebrating together and I'm like, because of me, it's not a football game. <laughs> and I, got, I knew at that moment then it was special. The four-time distance Olympic gold medalist has always had a close affiliation with the capital city. He's now closing in on retirement and this weekend will bid an emotional farewell to London at the big half run. I'm really excited to be here in London. Knowing on Sunday, once you've taken part and finished the race, this is it, this is the last time. The last time ever is fast approaching, but what does life beyond the finish line hold for the Londoner? As I said, I've got to find something that makes me happy, something that I can enjoy. I think to start my own show would be amazing. Um, Your own show? Um, that, that's always, uh, I think, the key thing, um, whether it's cooking, cleaning, or, or whatever that involves. But as again... What would it be called? <laughs> slow, <laughs> slow mo. Slow mo. <laughs> Not fast anymore. <laughs> Last year, he featured in a documentary where he revealed he had been illegally trafficked to the UK as a child. There's something about me you don't know. It's a secret that I've been hiding since I was a child. With all of the rhetoric around immigration and immigrants politically now, if you came to the UK today, do you believe that you would have had the 15, 20 year career in life that you have had? I think it would be a totally different system, as I said, like uh, uh, to be able to did what you did and have the support of your country was incredible. Again, it's, you know, for me, as I said, I was just a child at the time and, and child trafficking is something that exists uh, as, we, as we're talking right now is happening and it's something that, you know, we do need to make changes and, and to help kids, particularly not to go through what I did. Do you think since that documentary, we as a nation have become less kind towards those seeking refuge? I think in, in all situations, we just have to think about humanity and no one wants to be in that situation. And as, a, as a myself, I was just a child, I was a victim. Um, and a lot of people do not want to be in that situation, but they're in that situation for reasons. But again, it's showing that humanity and showing what we can do. A man of Somali heritage, but now one of Britain's favourite sons, Farah's journey and story is one of pain, but ultimate adoration. <laughs> Mo Farah has long hung up his Olympic spikes, but is encouraged by what Team GB can do at next summer's Games. I think Paris is going to be excited for, for Great Britain. Josh Kerr, uh, Katrina Johnson, um, uh, Gemma Ricky, Laura. There's, there's a lot of youngsters who are coming through. We've still got time and I believe, you know, hopefully we'll come away with a couple of gold medals. A career that has brought 19 winners medals and even more memories comes to an end as the Mobot finally powers down.